Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to do a video on cutting tube tails. Coming at you from my living room. My wife is out of town right now, which means I can cut tails on the couch and watch TV while I do it. So I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of my process here. Obviously you see the dirty dishes in the background. She's not home. So here's my, uh, here's my tube tail cutter right here. This is a uh, Arbor Press. A uh, little redneck uh, engineering thing here going on. Uh, Arbor Press here raises this up. I use a hockey puck on the press just with Velcro so I can pull it off and replace it. After you cut a couple hundred tails with this, you might need to replace it. These things are a dollar. Hockey pucks are cheap. And they're just about the right consistency, the right uh, hardness. For cutting tails, this is my uh, my tail cutter here. Just a bunch of razor blades stacked together. They've got washers in between and uh, nuts and bolts holding them together. So that's what I use to cut them with. So that just sits right here. Right there on the block. Right on the press. Tube lays on there. Hockey puck comes down. And you got nice cut tails. So go ahead and uh, show you the process. Okay, so I've got here the uh, tubes that we made in the last video. And what we do with these is we just lay them flat on here, right on the cutter. Got our arbor press here. Hockey puck comes down. Pull the block out of there. And what you have, if I can show it to you, a nice cut tube. Now my block's a little bit narrow. Uh, I need to make it a little bit wider. If it was about another half inch wider, we wouldn't be left with this little wide piece on the end that doesn't fit. But these are my own tubes. I use them for personal use, and I don't care. The fish are going to like them just the same. Pull them off. Got a nice... Professional looking smallmouth bass tube that will catch fish. Throw them on the pile with the other ones. Do some more. Now, another thing you can do to help get them off a little bit, I keep a container of uh, worm oil over here and pull it into the frame so you can see it. And just dip the tube in the worm oil, let it run off, lay it on the block. Down she comes. Nice cut tube right there. There you go. Cut tubes. Another thing you can do is you can take the actual razor blade and just dip the razor blades right in the right in the oil there too. Lay it back there. Center the tube on the block. Down she comes. Nice cut on that one there. There she is. Beautiful tubes. Those will fish. And you don't need to oil the block every time or the tube every time. Every half dozen or so, maybe. Next. Beautiful. Those will fish. And every now and then you're going to have to pull the plastic. You get little bits of plastic in your cutter. Got to pull that out. And once you get a rhythm going, you can knock these out pretty quickly also. Now the tail was getting stuck in there again. That means it's time to add a little bit more oil. Now 
Now, if I was to not use that hockey puck and just go steel on the knife blades, I'd wear these blades out. You get a couple presses and they'd be done. So you got to keep, you need to have this hockey puck or, or some sort of rubber or plastic just so that it doesn't, uh, you don't get metal digging into the blades. And that way you can save your blades and they'll last you a long time. Perfect cut tubes. So some of these tubes, I only I only triple dip them, dipped them three times, and some of them I dip four times. I like the triple dip tubes for when I'm using a jig head, and I like the quadruple dipped tubes when I'm going to Texas rig them. You dip them four times, you get a little bit thicker sidewall, and uh, your Texas rig hooks will hold into the plastic a little bit better. The uh, triple dip jigs with a little bit thinner side wall will stretch around your jig head a little bit better. A little easier. And I like having multiple profiles. If, I'm, if I want to have a thicker a thicker head, um, it's a really good goby imitation. I live up around the Great Lakes. There's lots of goby. And a thick head is a good, really good for a goby imitation. So it all comes down to personal preference and what you're looking for. If you like a thin walled tube, that's cool. If you like a thick walled tube, you can do that too. You can uh, fish these any way you want. There's really no wrong way to do it. And the nice thing about making your own is you can make them exactly how you like them. I personally like a smaller tube, a shorter tube. These are about three and a quarter inches. And I find that's about perfect for smallmouth. Now you can make them four, four and a half inches and flip them for largemouth. That'll work great too. Nice thing about making your own. You can do exactly what you want, make them exactly how you want, fish them how you want. getting a little bit of a rhythm going here. It's a little faster when I'm just doing it and not worrying about the video. Oh, I pulled that off too hard too. Time for more oil. Pulled off too much skirt on that last one. Add some oil to the block. Add a little oil to the tube. However you want to do it. Get your block situated where it's supposed to go. Now, I probably need to mount this block so it's not moving, so it's in the same place every time. That might be a good thing for me to do, but for now it's just sitting on there, and there's not a thing wrong with that. So there's, uh, I don't know, what was that, 15 tubes? So knock those out fairly quick, and uh, that's how it's done. So if you like the video, um, hit the like button down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what else there is to say about tubes, but uh, that's how I do them. Works really well for me. Um, that's probably not the only way of doing it, but hey, it is what it is, and it works good for me. Well, you guys have a good day, and uh, see you next time. Thanks.